Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather coming at you with another video. In this update, we're going to talk about a stratospheric warming event that's taking place right now, but also there's a fight going on with the MJO in the upper atmosphere that's a battle zone and sending them mixed signals with the data and sending the models in full chaos mode. So I'm kind of here to explain and kind of make some sense of all this. So if you do like weather related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload about five videos a week uh, to keep you updated. All right, so let's get started. So here's what a, a, a sudden stratospheric warming event looks like. We've got a massive spike in the Arctic it jumps about 70 degrees over a period of a couple of days and it has a displacement. Well, the cold air has got to go somewhere. So it filters down to the surface, but over a period of time. So some of them might be minor or major. And this particular one looks like a minor event, but it also maybe potentially have a two prong approach. And on the back half of December, send a second surge into the United States. All right. So here's the SOI index. This is the Southern Oscillation Index. I follow this religiously. Back on August the 8th, the uh, Enzo Neutral first classified. Now, then the Climate Prediction Center had an 85% chance of it lasting all the way through the end of March. And so, and then, but what happened was uh, back on November the 7th, this sent a signal to me that a weak Madokio Nino was in the makings. Well, since then, it's been two weeks, we've had negative daily drops, and now we're negative nine on the 90 day moving average. And that essentially activated the Pacific jet, which brought all that rain from that winter storm yesterday into California. And yes, an El Nino Madoki, uh, El Nino potentially could be forming. Now it's not classified yet from the Climate Prediction Center, but it's showing all the makings that we're in one right now. And here's an overall snapshot of where the waters are at currently as of November 29th when I'm making this recording. It's got that elevated water temperatures. We've had record, record highs in Alaska, but we've also had a lot of snowfall there too as well. And you can see the, the upwelling of the winter storm with the waters recently off the coast, off the west coast. But we've got a lot of no convection in the Indian Ocean. We've got warmer waters in the Eastern Pacific showing that weak El Delki coming on. But we've got a lot of, lot of warm waters in the Gulf and along the Eastern Seaboard, which is going to be a major player for potentially two snow events that's coming up in the first half of December. So here's an overall snapshot of the rainfall over the next 10 days and it's showing again another system off the soi 90 day moving average uh weak el doki monino that's showing that or some call it uh motokai but uh showing more moisture coming into california starting from wednesday potentially all the way through next saturday bringing more heavy rain into california and more snows to the sierras and and really kicking in and the central part of the United States bringing, and you can see this here, where we're going to have potentially a snow event uh, later on next week. But here's kind of an overall snapshot of the 500 millibar pattern form from the, the, the latest European model. And it shows a classic ridge over the top. We've got positives up top and we got negatives underneath. That sets up the classic uh, convergent zone where this uh, low pressure is potentially going to deepen over the waters off the eastern seaboard and potentially bring a, a pretty good uh, snowstorm up into the northeast uh, something and in a lot of areas that haven't seen snowfall this year are going to see some snow and we've got potentially that classic setup forming we've got that low pressure coming off the coast we've got ridging over the top sends that convergence and has that bear clinic zone filter in where we could have a snow band and sending a whopper of a storm up to the eastern seaboard sending uh three to six six to twelve even 18 plus inches and in, in parts of the northeast but before that we could have a potential ice storm up in uh pennsylvania uh, we've got that that warm water vapor you, you, saw, you saw all the waters the warm waters off the coast that could 
we got massive, you know, Arctic air coming down to the surface. So Arctic air is dense. It sinks to the surface, but we got that warm air aloft. And this is where that making that transition. We could set the stage for a, a, a quarter inch to a half inch ice storm in uh, Pennsylvania. So you have to be looking out for that on a Sunday, potentially before that snow uh, potentially kicks in. And here's the latest European model of that snow. It's kind of ascending a whopper of a storm. I'm thinking about two to four inches in Philly, uh, three to six in New York City, uh, probably eight to 12 in Boston and uh, at Providence, Rhode Island. And as it swings up upstate, we could have some inland amounts of uh, easily over a foot and potentially 18 inches in spots. So, and, and we've got potentially another system on the fourth and fifth on the back side of that. So we could have two potentially systems Maybe the second one, not not as great as the first one, but there's a, a lot of snow coming up for the Northeast uh, next week. And if we extend it out into the eighth, then we have that ridge over the top. Again, it's setting the stage for another potential storm around the 10th or the th 10th, 11th, the 12th off the Eastern seaboard. So that's just something we're looking at for the longer term. And it has this uh, displacement of the, of the polar vortex coming around this is the 10th and showing that potentially uh another storm potentially affecting uh, the united states coming up on week two of december so here's an overall snapshot of what's going on with the solar minimum we've been talking about this a lot we've got 16 days in a row of no sunspots we're at 252 i've estimated we'll end about 274 that potentially puts us at number three in the last 149 years, the only the only years that beats us, 1878, 1901, 1913. Well, none of us was living that around then. So we've got a lot of uncertainty what, what this potentially means for the longer term. But what happened in 2009, which was the longest event in 100 years, we had the 25th coldest winter in 25 years and the most snowiest. So there's a good bet we see a lot of snow this year. And if you check under the hood, now what's going on? If we just take a city like Boston, for example, if we take the last uh, big snow events over the last hundred years, the last tw you know 29 events, and you can see back in 2014, 15, which again, my analog years were 2013, 14, 14, 15. So this is one of my analog years that I had going into the winter months and my official winter forecast showing now this is a city that only averages that averages 48 inches a year so back in that year it had 110 and it was a weak madoki el nino in a low spot so sunspot year the second was another weak low spot neutral number three 1993 a lot of people remember that that was a neutral year so again we're classified as neutral we could be going into a weak madoki but look at the top 10, weak madoki, weak madoki, weak madoki, weak madoki. So you can see what transpired in these low sunspot years going into a weak modokai or modoki El Nino. And here's the overall uh, longer range James Tech model of what it looks like currently. And you can see it's picking up on that weak El Nino, sending more cold air, two thirds of the country. If we zoom in, this is what it looks like and look at the, the look at the activated pacific jet and look at all that cold air it's showing in the southeast that would be incredible uh if that were to take place but this is just like i said this is the longest longer range uh james tech model of what it's actually showing right now so what's going on in the longer term well you know right now i follow this a lot which is the mjo we've been into a uh a, a, Colder phase one, this is the latest uh, CF CFS V2 model, and it has us potentially stalling out in phase two, which is a colder phase. But if we look at the latest European model, it's got us swinging into from one, from two, going into a warmer phase three, but every single day it's been kind of like b backing off a little bit. So there's a lot of uncertainty going into week uh, two and three, in December and so what does that look like all right so right now we're in we're in phase one it's sending some more cold shots in the northern part of the United States and the eastern seaboard potentially be going into phase two well if it goes into phase three then that's where some of the models are showing a, a warm-up 
and uh, a warm up in December. And then if it goes into phase four, forget about it. <laughs> it's going to be warm all across the United States. So uh, there are some models that are actually showing that 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 could happen. If you looked at the latest uh, JMA model that updated uh, yesterday, this is this is where it's at currently from day three to nine. And it's showing some of that cold air demon into the northeast uh, but that ridge building and in, in the southeast and in warmer air in into Texas. So we're starting to get a little bit mixed signal. So if we're in warm phase, if we're in a phase two, we should be a little bit colder in Texas. But the JMA is showing we're going to be warmer. So we're getting a lot of mixed signals. Uh, again, warmer phase two, showing that week two system coming into the northeast. But look what happens by week three and four. Then. The ridge takes over, and this is the latest JMA, so that's where we're getting some mixed signals showing warm across the eastern seaboard and much of the United States, and the Grinch <laughs> would still Christmas and not have, you know, a lot of a lot of hopes of, of a white Christmas would be dashed, and, and that would not transpire. So if we check out the other side, again, this is the phases that what it looks like. There's potentially, it could stall and uh, phase two back up into phase one if you want if you like cold weather you typically want it to stall in phase phase eight so and there's some signals that it could in the longer range models so let's delve into it so here's the stratospheric warming event currently right now showing that first impulse of some little bit of arctic air coming into the northeast uh the first week in december but here's what we're looking at for the back half of december maybe a potentially second surge of the stratosphere releasing of the polar vortex coming to the United States. And you can see this kind of a, a split flow that's happening, potentially a second wave. And this is on the six coming in and I'll show you what's, what it looks like for the middle of the month. Right now, this is the latest uh, European model of the 500 millibar pattern. It's showing potentially another system. And now this updated just recently, yesterday, what even showing this, but activating uh, off the Pacific jet and could be coming up from the Eastern, you know, Eastern seaboard. But if we look at the longer range uh, CFS V2 model, it shows something completely different, right? So here's what it lo currently looks like. This is week one, all right? So we've, it shows that snowpack in, on the ground. It shows that clipper system that's coming in, bringing some pretty good snowstorm in the Northeast. Now it would not look like this unless it has snow on the ground for a couple days. If you got snow on the ground, remember Denver went below zero. It hit one below with that snow event. It snowed 11 inches, so a lot of the models can't see can't see that, and it, it can add another 10 degree drop in temperatures even act you know with with snow on the ground. So we could be a lot colder than what the models actually show at cur you know currently. And if you take it out to week two, it's got more cold air coming to the United States. Remember the JMA had us warming up by then. And if you take it out to week three, which is essentially Christmas week, week three and four, it definitely had mixed signals with the JMA and the MJO going into a warmer phase. But the longer range CFS V2 model has something completely different. And we would be cold in the United States, especially along the Northeast and much of the country. And we would have a lot of happy campers for Christmas because that would mean about 60% of us would have a white Christmas. So <laughs> we're seeing kind of both sides in December. I know that's a, a, a lot to, to go over this, this morning, but I kind of wanted to delve into it, what's transpiring for December. So uh, definitely stay with me. If you saw value in this video, please subscribe to my channel and share with your friends on social media that do like weather related content and definitely catch me in the next video where I protect you before and after the storm.